please join me to read responsibly these words from Isaiah and Acts. As we did before, I'll read from the regular print. Please respond in the bold italicized text. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Strengthen us with your gifts of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us, the Spirit of right judgment and courage. Strengthen us with your gifts of right judgment and courage, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us, the Spirit of knowledge and reverence. Strengthen us with your gifts of knowledge and reverence, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us, the spirit of wonder and awe in the presence of the living God. Strengthen us with your gifts of wonder and awe, Holy Spirit. And now, let's listen to the Acts. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. You shall love the Lord with your, all your, with your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your mind. Keep the words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are home and when you are away. When you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Holy God, hear our prayers. Amen. Stand and sing with me as we sing about the faithfulness of God this morning.
is your faithfulness, Lord. And God, we recognize that you've been faithful in providing for us um, with our needs and, and with all that you've given us, Lord. We, we give back um, just some of that to you, God. We ask that you bless these offerings that we are going to give, that they can be used for your kingdom, for outreach ministry, and to spread your word further. Um, we thank you for all the many ways that you have blessed us and will continue to bless us.
Bibles today to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. How many of you watched the Super Bowl last Sunday night or any portion of the Super Bowl? Okay. I know most of you who watched it watched it for the commercials. We didn't really care who won the game. Patriots, Philadelphia, who cares, right? If the Cowboys aren't in it or the Texans or something like that. Well, I will say that I did watch the second half. Uh, during the first half, we watched the Puppy Bowl on Animal Planet, and I'd rather not talk about that. <laughs> but uh, we, we did. We did. And so, uh, in the game of football, there's something called an audible. That is when the team that has the ball gets up to the, the line of scrimmage there where they're going to run the play, and the quarterback looks out, and he decides he's going to change the play. That's what I've done today. And I didn't tell Dave until Friday that I was going to change the play, that I was going to call an audible. And so I decided that, uh, that I would not preach another sermon on what it means biblically to be a church member. I felt that after last Sunday there wasn't much left to say. And so if you missed the service last Sunday, you can find a link to it on our church Facebook page. It's also on our YouTube channel on the Internet. The New England Patriots have won five Super Bowls. I remember them talking about this last week. Had they won last week, they would have had six, and that would, tie, would have tied the record for most Super Bowl wins by a team. But their quarterback, Tom Brady, has led 42 fourth-quarter comebacks in his career. 42. Now, that's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Eight of those fourth-quarter comebacks have taken place during the playoffs, during the postseason. As I watched the game, the commentators kept saying, I wonder if Brady will lead his team to another comeback. And much to the chagrin of Patriot fans, but much to the light to the delight of all the rest of us, the Patriots did not win that Super Bowl, and Tom Brady did not lead his team to another comeback. And so today I want to talk with you about comebacks. Not the kind that come from a, a smart aleck mindset. But I'm talking about spiritual comebacks. I want to talk to you today about spiritual comebacks. In last, last Sunday's sermon, I mentioned Simon Peter. And I mentioned that, that Simon Peter's bedrock, foundational confession of faith, that Jesus was the Christ, that He was the Son of the living God, that that, that was the foundation upon which Jesus would build His church. And that confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, that was the first time anyone had ever made that confession. And so Peter had a very large part to play very early on. He's the first person ever to make that confession, that statement, that proclamation that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then later on, Peter is the, the first person ever to stand up and proclaim the Gospel after the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. First person ever to do that. So he plays a major role. But between that time when he made that, that bad bedrock foundational confession of faith, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the day that he stood up and proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost, between those two mountaintops, Peter went through a, a valley. A dark valley, a deep valley, a, a spiritual valley. On that Thursday night when Jesus and His disciples met in the upper room. After that, Jesus took them out into the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus went out to pray and He took Peter, James, and John along with Him. And He told them, He said though, at one point He said, I want you to stay here. And I want you to stay awake and I want you to pray. And Jesus went a little further. Well, Peter can't stay awake. He falls asleep. He lets Jesus down in that regard. Then, when the guards come to arrest Jesus, Peter resorts to violence, cutting off the ear of one of the guards. Jesus says, no, Peter, this is not the way. And then finally, as Peter is standing in the courtyard, outside the place where Jesus' trial is taking place, Peter turns his back on Jesus. He denies that he ever even knew Jesus. It was, it was a failure of nerve in the highest degree. But after all this, Peter makes a comeback. We all go through spiritual valleys in our lives. Deep, dark valleys. Times when our faith and our fervor fail. Sometimes we get lazy or undisciplined in our walk with the Lord. 
picked up one of the tunes in that song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Sometimes we, we're not as disciplined in our walk with the Lord as we, we could be. Sometimes we resort to tactics that are unbefitting of the good news of Jesus Christ. And yes, from time to time we deny Jesus in one form or another. We don't often deny Him with our lips like Peter did, but, but sometimes we do deny Him with our lives. It was Brandon Manning who said the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out the door and deny Him by their lifestyles. This is what an unbelieving world simply finds Unbelievable. So yes, in some form or fashion or another, we all deny Jesus from time to time, if not with our lips, then with our lives. But just like Simon Peter, when we go through those, those spiritual valleys, we can make a comeback. No matter how many times we have messed up, no matter how many times we have failed, no matter how many times we have denied Jesus, it's never too late to make a comeback. And so I want you to look with me in Matthew chapter 26. As we read Matthew's account of Simon Peter's denial of Jesus. Jesus is, has been arrested and he's on trial there before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court. And it says, now Peter, beginning in verse 69, now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out into the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives it away. I don't know what kind of accent Galileans had, but it was fairly distinctive, evidently. Verse 74 says, Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Would you bow with me for prayer? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you that as we recall such a major player in the, the development of the early church, Simon Peter, we, we recognize that he was far from perfect. We find comfort in that because we know we're far from perfect. We know that, Lord, we failed you. Sometimes we know, Lord, that we that we resort to tactics that, that aren't befitting of you. And Lord, yes, from time to time we we deny you, if not with our lips, then with our lives. And Lord, all we can do at this point is seek forgiveness and say, Lord, please forgive us. Help us. Help us to do better. Help us to be better. Help us today to learn to learn from this example in Scripture of a man who went from mountaintop to mountaintop, but between the two went through a dark valley. And Lord, we know you're, you're the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. Help us to see that here clearly in your word. Help us to walk away from here knowing that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Knowing that you love us and that you lift us up. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Peter denied Jesus. It, it's one of the most gut-wrenching scenes in the New Testament in my mind. He denied Jesus, but we know also that he later made a comeback. You go and you read the first couple of chapters of the book of Acts, and you see him. He's standing right there, and you read on through the book of Acts, and he's such a major key player in the, the development, the formation of the earliest church. So what were the elements of that comeback? Sports commentators will analyze and reanalyze and hash and rehash the, the elements of a comeback on Monday morning on ESPN. What were the elements of Peter's comeback? First of all, there was Peter's brokenness. His brokenness. Verse 75 says, When he remembered what the Lord had said, and one of the other Gospels says that when Jesus looked at him, that he made eye contact with Jesus. But when he remembered the words that Jesus had said, he went outside and he wept bitterly. He was a broken man. He was broken over his sinfulness. If we're going to make a a spiritual comeback, uh, the first element 
The one thing that has to be there from the get-go is that element of brokenness. We have to be broken over our, our sin and over our condition before the Lord. If we don't realize we've messed up, if we're not willing to admit that we've messed up, if we're not broken over the fact that we have messed up, there will never be a comeback. The first element is brokenness. The second element here is Peter's repentance. <laughs> repentance. The word repent literally means to turn. To turn away from what it is that you are doing and to turn back to the Lord. The main difference between Peter, Simon Peter, and Judas Iscariot was this. Peter was repentant. Judas was not. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Really, what's the difference? The only difference is Peter was repentant and Judas was not. Herschel Hobbes said, unlike Jesus, unlike Judas, who merely regretted his act, Peter was filled with godly sorrow, the sorrow that leads to true repentance. The Bible does not come right out and say Peter repented. It's not there. It's not in black and white. But, but we can read between the lines well enough to know that Peter repented. Otherwise, Peter never would have run to the empty tomb on Sunday morning had he not repented and turned back to the Lord. Peter would have never stuck around. Peter never would have been reinstated by Jesus in John chapter 21. If you haven't read that account in a while, beautiful. Jesus calls him up and he says, Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed must you three times. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? Three times. How many times did Peter, Jesus say, Peter, do you love me? Three times. Full reinstate, but that never would have happened had Peter not repented, turned back to the Lord. Peter would have never stood up and preached before thousands on the day of Pentecost had he not repented and turned back to the Lord. Peter's brokenness, that godly sorrow that, that leads to repentance, he had that. He turned back to Jesus. It's one thing to feel regret and remorse. It's another thing to repent, to turn, to turn away from sin and turn back to Jesus. If we don't do that, there will be no comeback. There's brokenness. There's repentance. The third thing, the third element we see here is that, that Peter stayed close. I find this very interesting and very important that this is another difference between Judas and Peter. Judas went back to the chief priests. And then he went out and hanged himself, but he, he ran away from the people of God. Peter, on the other hand, Peter stayed close. We don't know exactly where he went when he left Thursday night. The Bible doesn't tell us where he went. But I do know this was Thursday night. We don't know where he was. All day Friday or all day Saturday. We have no way. The Bible doesn't know. But we know exactly where he was on Sunday morning. On Sunday morning, Peter was wherever the rest of the disciples were. Because when those women came and told the disciples that Jesus had risen, Peter's right there. He doesn't distance himself from the people of God. He stays close to the other followers of Jesus. And I want you to know that when you are down and out, Whatever has happened, however it is that you've messed up or whatever it may be, when you think there's no way that you can ever be right with the Lord or accepted again, the absolute worst thing you can do is separate yourself from God's people. The worst thing that you can do is separate yourself from people who can lift you up and encourage you. That is exactly what our enemy wants us to do. That's exactly what Satan wants us to do. Satan wants us to get away from God's people. Satan wants us to get away from people who can hug us and love on us and encourage us. Even during cold and flu season, we need encouragement and love. Satan wants us to get away from that. He wants to isolate us from the people who can speak the truth in love to us. Satan wants to do that so he can lie to us and he can deceive us and he can tell us that there's no way God can possibly still love you. And that's a lot easier for Satan to make it believable when we distance ourselves from God's people. 
And we don't have God's people there around us to, to help us stay strong. Satan will do all this because he never wants us to make a comeback. Don't isolate yourself from other believers. When you're going through a valley, stay close to the family of God. Peter was broken over his sin. He repented of his sin. He stayed close to the family of God. And the last thing, the last element here is when it came down to the wire and the game was on the line, Peter stepped up. He stepped up. Rewind. Last Supper. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. We know Peter repented. We know he turned back to Jesus, just as Jesus said he would. What did he do after that? He stepped up. He stepped up and strengthened his brothers and sisters. And then in the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the leader of the early church in and around Jerusalem and Judea. When we're in a spiritual slump, when we're going through a dark valley, a spiritual valley, when we've slipped up or messed up, just like Peter, be broken. Repent. Turn back to the Lord. Stay close to the family of believers. And then when the time comes... Step up. It's not a full comeback. It never will be a full comeback if we don't step up. How many of you know who George Foreman is? George Foreman. Right? He's the guy that sells the grills. I mean, that's... But before he was selling kitchen appliances, George Foreman was a heavyweight boxer. And he made one of the greatest comebacks in sports history. In 1987, after having been retired from the sport of boxing for 10 years, George Foreman announced that he was going to make a comeback. Seven years later, so it was a long comeback in the making, seven years later, George Foreman knocked out Michael Moore in the 10th round, and he broke three records. First, he became, at age 45, the oldest boxer ever to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Second... 20 years after losing his title the first time, he, he broke the record for the, the fellow with the longest interval between uh, first and second world titles. And third, he was 19 years older than Michael Moore, so he broke the record for age difference between champion and challenge. Three records he broke. But the thing is, 1987, George Foreman says, I'm making a comeback. Now, at that time, I'm sure he started training and doing whatever it is that boxers have to do to get ready for their fights. But it never would have been a comeback if George Foreman hadn't actually put on the gloves and stepped into the ring and stepped up. Simon Peter made one of the greatest spiritual comebacks of all time. He denied knowing Jesus. He flat out turned his back on Jesus. Most people would have said, that's it, buddy. You're done. You're through. If you're going to do that, pfft, on you. Don't need you. But no, that's not how God operates. That's not how Jesus operates. Jesus Christ gives him a second chance. And Peter makes a comeback. He's broken over his sin. He repents, turns back to the Lord. He stays close to the family of believers. And then when the time comes for him to step into the ring on the day of Pentecost, he puts on the gloves and he steps in the ring and he steps up and he announces the good news of Jesus Christ. I know that some of you here today are going through a spiritual valley in your life. I don't know who, I don't know what it is, but I know that some are, because there are always some going through those dark times. Satan may have even convinced you it's too late, that you're too far gone, but, but you're never too far gone for Jesus to bring back. Never too far gone to make a comeback. Satan may have even convinced you that it's too late, that there's not enough time left on the clock. But Satan's a liar, and the father of all lies. It's never too late. Be broken. 
Turn back to Jesus. Stay close to the family of God. And when the time comes and Jesus calls you to take the field, or to step into the ring, step up.